What you just heard is my voice being processed with the Erika Synth Syntracks. Even after making a whole album, which you can pre-order on my Bandcamp, with the Syntracks, there's still so many things that I haven't explored. But now I feel a little more comfortable giving you a better overview about how the synthesizer works and, yeah, basically what I like and also what I don't like about it. One of the best things about the Syntrax is that it can act as a hub for your studio. It does have two quarter jack ins and you can route these to any of the functions in this synthesizer. So you can use it to process and mix signals, to shape them, to make them nicer using the filters, add spring reverb and then you can listen back to everything through the internal speakers or the headphones out. I've been using it as a sub mixer and processor for the no coast for example, or the Moog Sub Harmonicon. The Syntrax is perfect for processing the outside world, as you could hear in the beginning with my quasi Dalek voice, and let's try a few more of those. <laughs> The ring modulator is just so fantastic on this and it's part of the sound of the Syntrax. It just sounds very electric and beautiful. And when you use it to process the outside world, that character comes through. To use Syntrax as a centerpiece of the studio makes a lot of sense when we look at the mixer section. We have two channels with pan settings here. Then we've got two channels for the input, which can be switched to line and mic input. I'm not able to drive this Shure SM7B with that, that needs much more gain than here, but a regular mic such as an SM58 will work nicely. And then we've got the output filters. And let me tell you, these are, these are one of the things that make the Syntrax sound really good. It's not only the sonic character that makes these interesting, but rather the way you can create these very fake surrealistic stereo images. It's really not recommended on bass if you want to go on vinyl later on, but it does sound so good on synthesizers. <laughs> And that brings me to another thing. The raw sound of the oscillators is just fantastic. They remind me of test equipment, especially Wavetech. And that is actually a good tip if you want this kind of sound on a budget. Look for the Wavetech 130 series. They cost about 60 to 100 bucks and each of them is a rather lovely oscillator. Oscillator 1 has sawtooth and sine wave and variable shape for the sine wave.
This surely isn't the cleanest sine wave, but I love its buzzy tone. Let's check the saw. Second oscillator has a pulse wave with a variable shape. And a triangle wave. and you can sync it to oscillator 1. And together they already sing. But let's bring in the third oscillator. The third oscillator has the same wave shapes as oscillator 2, but it's meant for low frequency operation. It goes from 0.05 Hz to 500 Hz, while all the other ones go from 1 Hz to 10 kHz. So this is predestined as a modulation oscillator or bass. No synthesizer would be complete without a noise source. The noise generator can also be fed into the sample and hold. Sample and hold is of course a great modulation source. Here I'm routing it to the filter frequency and the noise just goes into the filter. I can then choose what comes out of the sample and hold output. Either oscillator 3 
or the sample and hold or the oscillator plus the sample and hold. I can of course set the level of the sample and hold and the rate. And that already brings us to the filter. And this has become my favorite filter because it's just very mellow. I've never heard a more mellow filter, I have to say. The filter has a very smooth way in which it reacts to being pinged. I'm sending it a little trigger signal from the oscillator 3 and I'm also modulating the frequency with the oscillator 1. I don't think I've ever paid so much attention to mixing levels on oscillators, but that's what this interface just does. Through all these mixing processes, you can really tune into the finest of worlds of synthesis, where you're just nudging, just nudging the knobs, and then something new happens, and it's hard not to get lost in this and I just recorded 30 minutes of this that I of course cut but yeah this is absolutely fantastic to explore. Here we have the reverb which to me is the most problematic part at least of this prototype version because this is prototype number three and it doesn't appear to be probably isolated because I get a lot of noise on the reverb. can hear that pretty well, probably. You've got built-in feedback, which is nice. So it does have a nice tone to it, but the noise is a little bit annoying, but I think that's gonna be fixed in the production versions anyway. So you don't have to worry about that. This is the control section. And the trapezoid here is basically an envelope generator, which can be used for all kinds of modulations, even sequencing. The trapezoid is now controlling the frequency of oscillator one. <laughs> I 
can tune it as I want. This is the speed of the sequence. Here you can get how much I wanted the note duration. Such a nice way to add very natural rhythms. And of course I could control the pitch then with a joystick. Everything can be controlled by the joystick. And that brings us to the heart of the Syntrix, the patch matrix. To the right, to the left, up and down. You can hear nice clicks when I do that. So you get acoustic feedback. But this is not only for signal routing. There are VCAs in here. So you get three different levels. So I can send the control voltage at a lower level to an oscillator. <laughs> And then I can send the control voltage, for example, to the filter. And that already gives me a bunch more control. And since this can be saved, I can use this for different settings of the matrix. To show you how fast the recall is, let's do that with a continuous sequence. There's almost no delay and this enables such performance possibilities that I still have to explore because you can basically program a whole composition here and if you, of course, remember all the knob settings, you can recall it anytime. And that's just incredibly powerful and something very unique. Syntrax can be sequenced via MIDI and CV gate. Is this a Synthi? Is this a Putney? And I'm not the one to answer that. I only had half an hour with the real Putney at Willem Tway and I was struggling to find out what I was doing. <laughs> so I'm the wrong person to tell you how faithful this is. I mean, it's not intended to be. This is not intended to be a clone. There are other companies that are specialized on cloning. This is more of a reimagination, and the patch matrix is the thing that sets it apart and makes it really interesting. All in all, I find the Syntrax to be a rather well-rounded instrument, and one that I'll be playing for the years to come. Because I feel it's confined in all the right ways, it gives you enough tools to explore for a long time, and it's open to the world. If you're interested in the musical applications of the Syntrax, I've made a playlist of all the tracks and how I created them of my new album, Assertion. That should give you some more context in how this can be used musically beyond being an effects machine. I am going to be uploading a sound pack of the Syntrax to my Patreon and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or visit the subreddit. That's it for this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.